Hey guys, Sim Bounds with Motorhome Rehab Ranch on Patreon, <clears throat> Ranch Hands. I'm going to talk about floors, interior floors today. <clears throat> I had a question about what are things to be concerned about or to think about when you're doing a floor treatment. It's a good idea. Originally, they put carpet in here. Why did they do that? Well, it was easy. <laughs> it also <clears throat> was very forgiving because if you had a uh, uh, a bolt sticking up or something it was like this like there's some carriage bolts right at the entry door you'd never know it if you didn't pull the carpet up <clears throat> so if you pull the carpet up and you're going to put something else down now you're going to have to worry about that bolt carpet carpet covers all that kind of stuff um uh but a problem with carpet it's dirty it's nasty it's smelly brings brings in odors uh you get wear patterns in the middle of it okay um and the smell stuff like that new the new concept there is a solid surface floor or, or, or uh, they call it wood floor but it's actually not wood you know that you know you know it's not wood it's some you know uh uh, material that's water resistant and the top is some kind of a laminate and it looks just like wood they even got it textured and everything else but it's not wood in in 91 uh when we started Classco, we did a real wood parquet floor insert when you came in well it got screwed up immediately the wood looked terrible uh, then about uh, three or four years after we did that, then we started using the laminate floors, the, and and we didn't have a problem with that. All right, so chances are you're going to want to do a solid surface floor. It's easier to clean. It doesn't get uh, uh, your patterns, your wear patterns. You don't see that. Uh, and doesn't have smells, and the dog can't pee on it, and then make a mess, you know, or something like that. When you look at these slapboard floors, or the solid surface floors, you want to use the slapboard types, not the kind that lock in this way and this way, because this is a small area. It'd be like a Rubik's cube trying to get that sucker cut the right size and locked in in two positions no 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 no. you want to use small boards you can get big boards big long boards they did that to make it cheaper right no 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 <clears throat> if you're doing a a tight cut on the floor you don't want to use large boards because then they won't lock in real well or the cuts too hard you want to use smaller boards that you can cut smaller pieces and you can you can fit it in there easier okay so the brand new stuff or big boards where you don't see the curve the edges and stuff don't use that you're going to really kill yourself trying to make that work um you may want to break it up like put carpet in the bedroom in the hallway have maybe a solid surface at the at the uh, galley maybe carpet up here okay something like that break it up a little bit you say well you know that car but you know think about this if you just put a carpet section in the in the hallway well it gets nasty take it up and put another one down you know i mean it's easy <clears throat> now up here problem you have in the front is it's real tight it's real small and under here of course what do you got under here mr motor and you got to get to him, right? So you'll have a piece right here in the middle. What well, the way we do it is we tuck it up into the, the front, have it overlap all the way to the, the uh, real close to the uh, the uh, seat pedestals, so you don't really see the seam, and then seam it all around it. Come down this step because right there, right there, is the highest uh, uh, traffic. Because when you're stepping up in here, your foot goes right here to go in. Okay, this is gonna, this is the spot that's gonna wear out first. So what do you do? You take this, and this is its own piece. When it gets nasty, you just make another one. Right? See right there, that's where it's gonna wear. 
Now in this situation, they put an extra little pad here to give it a little bit of extra step. Okay, that's underneath the carpet. Okay. Now, of course, the motor's under there. It's hot. It's noisy. Some you say some more noisy than others. I did a video about this, and the air and the noise. Noise will come in a little tiny hole. Air will be shooting in that hole. So <clears throat> the last video, you want to get everything sealed. Okay, everything sealed. Insulation for sound and for heat should be on the top of the wood. Wood's a real good insulator. We talked about this before. So if you put insulation underneath, if the insulation gets hot, then you lost your R factor. So put the insulation on the top of here. Because what you're doing is insulating yourself from the wood floor. Wood floor might get warm, but if, if you're insulated from it, then you're not hot. Okay? Uh, plywood is a pretty good sound barrier. If you put a, uh, a sound barrier on top of it, now, <clears throat> sound barriers are in uh, what we use, they're called sheet goods. It's a, it's a sheet with a high mass nylon streamer in the middle of it that absorbs the uh the uh the sound that's what it's about we use one pound sheet goods in other words one foot square weighs one pound okay when we did the dirt uh the diesels the duramax and the 6.5s we used two pound sheet goods by the way do you know what what makes all the noise in a diesel this this blew me away i couldn't believe it how did they get how did ford and all these guys get their diesels quiet the injector tubes that they they shoot that high pressure uh, 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 diesel into the thing, into the injectors, the steel tubes that run to the injectors are what vibrates. That's what you hear. If you go pull your hood and you look at those injector tubes, they're held with all kinds of things that makes them quieter. Ford ran the injector tubes through the head. There are no injector tubes. That's why they're quieter. Okay. So <clears throat> that noise, <clears throat> you'll have to cover all of this with sound deadening. I said sheet goods. There's another way you can do it. You can use a horse mat. A lot less money. Go to a tractor supply. Buy a, uh, a four by eight sheet of uh, uh, insulation will do a generator. It'll do about two thirds of up here. So you want to buy, if you're going to do this, buy two horse mats, <laughs> okay? Put a layer of horse mat on top of the plywood and then put your carpet on there. Maybe put, maybe put a, 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 a carpet pad, half inch, you know, rebond, like, uh, like this stuff. Put some rebond on top of the uh, horse mat and then put your carpet on it. I say carpet in the front. It's so tight because you have these you have these uh, pedestals. You make a carpet piece for that, and they go together real nice. They gimp together real nice. So carpet gives you a bit of a uh, gimp. I call it gimp so it doesn't have to be cut so perfect. If you got a hard surface here and a hard surface here, that edge is going to really really be difficult to do. You got to think about that. So carpet, you get carpet together and they kind of blend together, right? So that might be something to think about. Another thing to think about, say you're doing the floor, hard surface floor. Well, you got your wall and you get your hard surface floor. What about that little crack right there? How are you gonna make that look good? You make a toe kick, piece of carpet about that high, have it bound on the top, and then you'll have the, 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 uh, the hard surface floor, your wall, and then a little carpet toe kick right there. Cause that will be your gimp. Carpet's your friend, brother. Uh, on uh, a lot of the original cabinets, the toe kick is recessed. It's a three inch. So you cut a three inch piece and stuff it in there. So it's a gimp. So <clears throat> when you do a hard surface floor, you can't run all the way to the wall because this floor will move. It expands, it contracts, it moves. So you got to let it float. You put uh, a screw on each side and you run the solid surface to it so the screw will allow it to move a little bit. And then you put the carpet gimp on here to cover where the little crack is. Does that make sense? 
you got to think about what it's going to finish off looking like. You think of the floor. Well, the floor, of course. Yeah, it's up front to back. Yeah, great. But what about the edges, the corners? You don't think about those, and, and it, it, you know, well, you didn't finish the floor, you know? Um, toe kicks help. There was a question about the back. Um, when you have the two dinette seats sitting back there, you look at the floor and say, what's that two-inch piece of wood back there, the wedge back there? What's that doing about? <clears throat> well, remember I told you ergonomic uh, interior engineers helped design this thing. And there's a certain distance, an average distance from your knee to your foot. So when you sit, your feet are hanging, you know? So that number right there, when you sit on the, in the dinettes in the back, your feet were too long. They, but, you know, it didn't hit the numbers. So the engineer said, well, we have to hit the numbers. So they put a, they put a spacer in the back. In a GM floor plan, there's, a, there's a, a, about a two-inch riser that's screwed down. It, it's kind of goofy. It holds a lot of water, you know. Water gets in there and just rots the thing out like crazy. So when you're doing the floor and you get to the back and you see that riser, take it out. Life's too short. Because the transition, you got it up here and then the floor is here. What are you going to do with this transition? See, that's, that's the problem. It's the trim. You take that thing out and run your carpet all the way back. And when you run it all the way back, of course, it goes up the back. I call this the whoopee. <laughs> the reason the floor is not flat in the back is because if you go outside and look at the frame, the rear clip, it kicks up like this. So when you go over a speed bump, the back of the coach doesn't go all the way back and up. It goes up a little bit. Gives you a little bit of a little bit of clearance when you're going over a bump. Well, <clears throat> that that sweep up of that rear clip, that angled part that's aluminum in the back corresponds with that sweep up on the frame. So can you make it flat? Well, no. <laughs> Unless you change your frame. Now we'll say. <clears throat> on the trans modes that have doors in the back. Some of those, they've actually cut that whole rear clip out, dropped it down so it would go straight. It could be done. Anything can be done with cubic dollars. My, my guess is you're gonna wanna keep that up there, uh, especially if you're not gonna put anything other than just the rear cap on the back. Um, so you just kinda run your carpet and just go up with it. If you're gonna be solid surface, then my suggestion is to uh, put a, a panel, a half inch plywood panel, put that on there, it corresponds with the wood. Then you've got a, a flat surface or something that won't telegraph through that will be flat. Because when you're putting on <clears throat> a solid surface floor, you need it flat. Okay. You can't have uh, uh, two panels and, and it's like this. Can't do that. It's got to be, it's got to be right lined up together. So if you're going to do sheet goods, vinyl sheet goods, roll out sheet goods, you may have to put an eighth inch layer of plywood on the floor to get it flat so it won't telegraph the bolts or all the, the off, off uh, panels or things like that. So you got to think about that, telegraphing what's underneath. And you know, that's why it had carpet in it, because Bubba and Scooter didn't have to worry about all that stuff. Of course, Bub and Scooter's not probably alive in 2023. So you got to decide how you want to do it. You say, ah, oh, I'll just put carpet. You know, that's not a bad idea because, you know, you can put new carpet down. Putting the floor down, you go, oh, man, life's too short. Could be a lot of work. Okay. Think about it before you put it down. All right. All right. Well, look, thank you for that. If you're going to, if you're uh, going to put some carpet down, Give me a call. Put me your loop. Let's let's talk about what your idea is. Let's talk about colors, things like that. Um, these motorhomes are kind of small inside. You get a lot of colors and patterns. It's kind of busy. You know, you're going to think about what colors you're putting in here, and you want to stay with colors that kind of match together. You know, uh, fuchsia wasn't bad in the eighties, you know, or prints or stuff like that. All right. Well, look. Interior, make it your own bed and nails, guys. Thank you. If this was helpful at all, like, uh, subscribe, and uh, share. 
and uh, thank you for your support. Uh, you ranch hands, I hope you're getting some stuff out of this. Uh, if you're not, then tell me, and I'll get some stuff out of it for you. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.